My name is Joel Correa. I'm an assistant professor in the Center for Latin American Studies at the University of Florida. I'm a human geographer who conducts field-based research alongside community partners, and together we seek to understand how extra-local political, legal, and economic processes like international indigenous rights mechanisms, environmental governance schemes, and global commodity production and exchange influence livelihoods, the praxis of rights, and socio-environmental relations across scale. I draw theoretical and methodological inspiration from critical social theory, political ecology, science and technology studies, as well as ethnography and participatory research. My most recent field-based research projects in the Southern Cone have focused on indigenous land rights, the implementation of Inter-American Court of Human Rights decisions, expanding agrarian frontiers, and political ecologies of territorial struggles. So the Gran Chaco is certainly a place that many people haven't heard about, actually. It is uh, the second largest forest ecosystem in Latin America uh, behind the Amazon, so after the Amazon. It is over 1.3 million square kilometers in size, which to put in context is around twice the size the state of California in the United States. It's a huge area that spans from Bolivia, so it's in southeastern Bolivia, and reaches down through half of Paraguay into much of northern Argentina as well. And there's a little finger that reaches out into Brazil also, but the vast majority is centered between Paraguay, Bolivia, and Argentina. It's a hugely biodiverse area, and it's also home to over 30 indigenous peoples and a number of indigenous peoples who are still living in voluntary isolation. So it's highly significant for its biocultural diversity and for the fact that it has one of the world's largest dry scrub forests um, that exists. So what we see, uh, particularly in Paraguay, is indigenous peoples are impacted by deforestation in a number of ways. One would be impacts to the integrity of their territories. When you have a communal property that is titled to a community, but it is surrounded by an area that is completely deforested, it creates a whole series of different sorts of pressures. Those pressures can be ecological, whereas the forest that borders the deforested area starts to degrade. It can be economic, whereas there are no sort of other economic opportunities other than to work on cattle ranches or on uh, perhaps vegetable plantations for marginal wages. But those economic stressors can also come in the form of being forced or pressured to rent out significant areas of the communal territories to cattle ranchers or to soybean farmers who use those areas and in, and in so doing deforest them as well, permanently altering them uh, for generations to come. In June and July of 2019, I returned to South America with funding from the Global Fellows Program at the University of Florida International Center and also the Center for Latin American Studies and that funding was used to begin building relationships with potential partners not only in Paraguay but also in Bolivia and Argentina. And really centering on a series of questions that have to do with how infrastructure development, the expansion of the agrarian frontier, and other forms of extractivism are impacting indigenous territorial rights across the Gran Chaco. For the reasons of not only visibilizing what is taking place, because many people don't know about the Gran Chaco or what is happening there, for the fact that the deforestation that is happening is taking place so rapidly that the Gran Chaco will largely be deforested in the next 25 years, and to think about also how we can act quickly to use research uh, and community partnerships to really strengthen and fortify indigenous territorial rights across the region given the face of all of these new forms of extractivism and existing forms of extractivism that pose many significant threats for indigenous peoples across the region.